Hello everyone, welcome to another session for our Nabard ARD section. For today's video, we're going to do on fisheries and as usual, I've divided this as well into a few parts. Right, My name is Hansa Nora and I've been your mentor for your Nabard exam for your ARD section. Right, and please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and if you've liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well. Right, so let's move on. What is fisheries? So before knowing, uh, before we go to what fisheries are, we need to understand what fishes are. So fishes are these are basically a collective term of all the aquatic organisms or animals which are used for harvesting. Right, and these can uh, also include all the crustaceans or the mollusks, all the fishes. It includes all the aquatic animals, whatever lives in this sea right and uh, so fishing fisheries are mostly related to the term called fishing so what is fishing fishing is actually the capture of aquatic organisms in marine coastal as well as inland marine would involve seas or oceans whereas fishes which can be found in the coastals and inland uh, would be the uh, lakes the rivers and the reservoirs right so generally there's uh, fisheries these are mostly engaged in raising and harvesting of the fishes it can be wild as well and it may involve uh, capture and culturing of these aquatic animals or the wild fishes as well as raising of, raising them by involving aquaculture as well so this marine uh, and these inland areas or the fishes together they provide together along with this aquaculture they give a lot of um, and they provide a lot of nutritional values as well as uh, a great source of income to a lot of people in the world say about 200 million people will be dependent on these uh, fishery, fishery departments and these would also involve ranging from your harvesting which, which harvesting would be your capturing of the fishes to processing marketing and finally, your distribution of the product. Right, so these will be the steps of under the fisheries. So according to FAO, fisheries can be defined as an activity or an area which involves the raising and harvesting of these fishes. And uh, these can be either bred as well as they can be reared, right? So these are all about the introduction of a fisheries. I hope you guys understood. Right, so uh, let's move on to the importance of fisheries. So we've already talked about what fisheries are and now we're going to talk about how important this fishery department or fishery cultures are in uh, India or around the globe as well. So uh, right now we're just going to briefly talk about the importance of fishery. First and foremost, fisheries are a very important source of nutrition as uh, it is the highest source and the biggest source of protein as you all know as well as it can also have a lot of micronutrients as well as elements and which are really important in a, a children's healthy diet right and so it acts as a very good nutritional uh, benefit for the people and uh, these fisheries or the aquaculture it is also important a sector in the food production uh, as well as they provide a nutritional security uh, to the food basket and they contribute to the agriculture export so these Indian fisheries they have a really high uh, they have a really high export potential and they will be engaging a lot of millions of people in the same way uh, they'll be providing employment as well as they will be increasing the uh, in income of these people and thereby it's going to improve the country's economy as well so so here in the second point is just roughly summarize the it's that it contributes to the food basket to the health to the economy uh, export employment tourism of the country so the fish fish and the fish products they have uh, recently emerged as the largest group in the agricultural exports in india right and besides the large scale freshwater food which, uh, fish culture there's types like ornamental fishes as well as the high value marine fishes they also have started coming up in their status and they have gained a lot of importance in the recent past and this poor uh, usually the poor and uh, 
uh, the poor, they really depend on all this fishing as a primary source of income. So if we after promote these fisheries, then not only we're going to help them, we're going to increase their uh, standard of living as well as their livelihood, as, and we're definitely going to increase their uh, income, and therefore we're going to it's going to help in the economy economy of the country right so this is a very important uh, source of employment especially for those especially li people living in the coastal regions a lot of people usually depend on fishing as their source of income right so i hope the importance of fisheries are clear so let's just uh, talk, uh, talk about the scenario of uh, indian fisheries right so global position in the ranks third in fisheries and second in aquaculture, right? So the contribution of uh, fisheries to GDP is about 0.91 and contribution of to agriculture GDP is about 5.23. So the per capita fish availability per kilogram is nine. Ex uh, the annual export earnings, these are not that important. So as long as you remember, it's fisheries position as well as its contribution to the GDP as well as contribution to the agriculture uh, GDP that's more than enough right so there are different resources so the first one is the coastline and exclusive economic zones we have continental shelves rivers and canals reservoirs bone ponds and tanks flood plain lakes and derelict water brackish waters as well as the Asheries. So this uh, data has been taken from the Nas uh, National Fisheries Development Board, right? And so let's move on to a sector of fisheries. So normally fisheries can be divided into a fin fish and your non-fin fish. So when you talk about a fin fish, the first thing that comes in our minds is fins, right? So a fin fish is also known as the true fish, which we regularly see now and then. But the non-fin fish, it means that it doesn't have fins. So some of the examples for non-fin fish will be your crabs, oysters, prawns, seaweed as well. So this will come under your non-fin fish. And this fin fish can be further divided into two, which is capture fish as well as culture fish. So this capture fish, these are again further divided into marine and inland. And this cap culture fishes, these are further divided into freshwater aquaculture, brackish water aquaculture, marine cage aquaculture, ornamental fish aquaculture, and cold water aquaculture. So these uh, capture fish, capture fish are mostly, uh, uh, fisheries are mostly engaged with exploitation of the aquatic organisms where they, they do not, um, they, they do not stock the seed, right? And uh, these are mostly the, uh, they'll just have an intensive uh, culture, intensive farming, and in that way the yields also, it decreases gradually and uh, these overfishing they practice this overfishing and this definitely uh, in turn eventually will destroy the fish stock as well so the recruitment or the breeding of the uh, of the species they occur naturally and whether whereas in this culture fishes right so these are the cultivation of the selected fishes which are in a confined areas as well and these the main difference is that these in culture fishes they get an utmost care or the utmost care and they get a maximum yield right so the seed on the other hand here these are stocked the seed is stocked they are nursed they are reared where right these are the seeds are stocked well they are nursed and they are reared well and these are mostly done in a confined waters until the crop is harvested so these uh, the culture can either take place in ponds uh, which are provided and supplements as well as they will be taking care of the quality of the water as well as the feeds as well as all the fertilizers to get the maximum yield so these can these are some of the um, so these are the main differences between the capture fishes and culture.
fishes, right? And um, let's go to, so here I've just given some differences between uh, cult capture fishes as well as aquaculture. So basically, uh, capture fishes and aquaculture, these are very similar terms and uh, they, we cannot have much differences between these two because these are most, mostly, both of them, they're mostly confined with the cultivation and uh, and trading of these aquatic animals and products so these have very less differences but then we need to pinpoint that those important differences so that will our basics will be more clear and so that we'll be able to understand it better and we don't get confused later on so the main difference between here are that the fisheries these are mostly concerned with the fishes and shellfishes. Remember that, and they are mainly de they mainly deal with the catching, processing, and selling of the fishes. Meanwhile, in this aquaculture, these are mostly related to the cultivation of both the aquatic animals as well as the aquatic plants. So, this aquaculture is also known as fish farming. Um, they uh, involve both the natural as well as the uh, as well as the controlled cultivation of the selfish, the fishes, and the seaweed. Uh, it can be either in a fresh water or marine. Right. So these are the first differences between the capture fish as well or aquaculture the second point here is on wild fishes these are solely related to catching wild fishes and raising and harvesting of fishes so these are mostly done only for consumption purpose in a commercial way so but then aquaculture whereas it's an in science that involves all aspects of marine life and so it basically does not only pertain to the cultivation and harvesting of these um, fishes and aquatic animals but it's uh, it is a business that involves in the it's a business that involves in the marketing and production of other aquatic organisms such as shrimps oysters um, and other all of the other aquatic animals right and capture fish as well as aquaculture these are actually good for uh, maintaining and the sustainability of the fishes and resources and but then this can uh, the fisheries they can have a various types as well so while in capture fisheries these are mostly salt water or fresh water it can be wild or it can be farmed whereas in aquaculture it can be mariculture mariculture which is mostly specialized in the marine environment right and in the integrated multi-tropic aquaculture well it is a process where we use uh, the byproducts of another species and we use it as a uh, supplementary uh, feed or uh, supplementary feed or as a fertilizers for the other species so this is this creates a very sustainable approach towards uh, the whole aquaculture because not only is it preserving the other feed material but it's also recycling the material and in the uh, and so it will also reduce in your eutrophication as well right so these are so these are the whole dynamics and the differences between a capture fish and a aqua culture. So I hope these uh, these differences is clear for you all, right? And so let's move on to our uh, types of these capture fishes. So as we've already uh, discussed before, these capture fishes these can be further divided into marine and inland, right? So marine, I've already told, it's a zone where it mostly deals with the marine environment, right? And in inland, inland is uh, which occupies all the lakes, reservoirs, and ponds, or all of that, right? And these marine can further be divided into your coastal fishing as well as your deep sea fishing. And capture fishes here in turn we can be inland and they can be further divided into reservoir, riverine and asher riverine, right? So uh, the main difference between this is like this inland, these are mostly used for culturing and capturing of the fishes, right? And so let's go to our first one, capture fishes. So capture fishes, these can be divided into marine as well as inland. So let us talk about marine, right? And marine, these can also be further divided into pelagic fishes as well as demersal fishes, 
Right, so let us understand what a pelagic fish is. So these fishes, they live in the pelagic zone of oceans or lake waters, being neither close to the bottom nor the shore. So suppose this is the land and the, the sea is this. And a um, pelagic zone would somehow somewhat be in the middle. Suppose this is the end, bottom end of the sea and the pelagic wood zone would be here in the middle towards the upper level of the shore, right? So this is pelagic zone and these pelagic fishes, they range in the size from small coastal forage fishes such as herrings and sardines to a large apex predator oceanic fishes such as southern bluefin tuna as well as oceanic shark. These uh, marine pelagics, these are one of the uh, largest habitats on earth. They range uh, by, by occupying about around 1,370 million cubic kilometers. These are, um, they are the habitat for at least about 11% of the world's known fish species. The, so this has the highest amount, it means that it has the highest and the largest habitat if you actually compare it to the other fish fishes, right? And let's move on to the pelagic fishes, all right? So these pelagic fishes, again, these are subdivided into your pelagic coastal fishes and your oceanic pelagic fishes. As the name suggests, pelagic coastal so it will be more inhabited towards the coastal side and whereas pelagic oceanic will be from the, in the deeper side. So let us understand the difference between these two. So coastal fishes these inhabit the relatively shallow and the sunlit water till the, uh, so sunlit waters will be like till uh, till the point where the rays of the sun can hit the water right and these can these are above the continental shelf while the oceanic fishes these can inhabit the lower or the deeper parts of the water beyond the continental shelf, right? So these are the main difference between the coastal fishes and oceanic fishes. I hope it's clear. And so these coastal fishes, these are also known as a nertic or the inshore. So these will include, these coastal fishes will also include all the forage fishes as well as your predators as well. Right, and whereas these uh, oceanic, these oceanic uh, fishes or the oceanic pelagic fishes, these these are also known as offshore fish as well as open ocean. Right, so these are the main differences between these pelagic coastal fishes and oceanic pelagic fishes. Right, so these pelagic fish they range. The coastal fishes, they range from forage fish, as I've already told, herrings and sardines, um, large apex predators, ocean fishes such as uh, southern bluefin tuna. So sardines, tunas and all that, these are all in under these pelagic fishes. Now let's go to our demersal fish. So what is a demersal fish? A demersal fish, as we've already discussed before, demersal fishes, they live in the uh, lower bottom of the uh, of the sea, it means it, it means on the bottom side of the sea. So if it's in the coastal water, these are also found. This may be found in the continental shelf as well. So and, uh, if it's in the deep waters, deep waters, then it can be found and along the continental rise, right? So they live and they feed near the bottom of the seas and lakes, and they occupy the sea floors and lake beds, which usually consists of mud, sand, gravel, or rocks. As you can see in the picture here itself, and this demersal word, it comes from a Latin word, demerger, which means sink, to sink. And these demersal fishes are also known as the bottom feeders, right? And so these demersal fishes, they can be further divided into benthic fishes, as well as benthopelagic fishes. So what is benthic fishes? These benthic fishes, they mostly uh, they are they are the fishes which rest on the seafloor. So it means suppose this is the sea and this is the ground level of the sea. So these fishes, benthic fishes, will be mostly they'll be resting on the floor, right?
suppose these are the continental shelf or the continental rise. So these bentopelagic will be right above this benthic fishes. So they'll just float right above the sea floor, right? So these are the main differences between the submersal between the benthic fishes as well as the uh, bentopelagic fishes, right? So um, let's go to our deep sea fishes. So deep sea fishes also will come under your demersal fishes, but these fishes, these are uh, these are the fishes which actually inhabit the deepest waters in the of the ocean or of the sea. So me, mostly in the dark region where the sunlit water, where the sunlit water is not possible, they usually stay in the dark. So that's why they have this particular uh, extra or or uh, organs which can illuminate and give light where there is no light. So this usually stay below the epipelagic or the photic zone. So photic zone would be as a photophotic zone which comes in the sun where there is no sunlight or where the sun cannot pass through or the light cannot pass through then it means that it's a photo, photo zone. So these are some of the examples of the uh, deep sea fishes. One example here, uh, this is of a lantern fish. This is one of the most common uh, deep sea fishes, right? And um, here we have your angler fish. And we also have your flash, we, we also have flashlight fish. And these are known as the viper fish. So these are some of the examples, common examples of these deep sea fishes, right? And these deep sea fishes can further be divided into a bestipelagic and episopelagic fish. So these bethypelagic fish, they live or they generally inhabit. Uh, so they generally inhabit uh, below around 1,000 1, meter to 4,000 meter, right? So and this abyssopelagic fishes, they live or inhabit below 4,000 meter to 6,000 meter below the sea. So these are some of the differences between these two fishes, right? All right, so let's go to our inland fishes. These are also another type of your capture fishes. So inland fishes, as the name suggests, inland in, in a tight where it does not, in, does not uh, involve oceans or seas, right? And so inland fishes are the commercial uh, fishing operation are the commercial areas or the rivers where the fishing operation they take place in the fresh water. Remember this, the fresh water and these some of the fishes is capture fishes where the fish they live naturally in the body of water or of the water these are harvested, right? And um, these inland fishes uh, they contribute about six they contribute about sixty percent to your fisheries, whereas Whereas the marine fishes, they contribute only about 40% to your fisheries, right? So it has a higher demand and higher value, right? And this riverine, uh, there are three types of inland fishes, remember? So we have your riverine fishes, we have your estuarine as well as your uh, reservoir fishes. So let us understand what a riverine fish. So riverine fishes would be generally your fishes, which or the fisheries which involve the river systems, right? So basically in India, we are the river systems or the river systems they are divided and the tributaries are divided into five main uh, which is in the Indus, Ga Indus Ganges, Brahmaputra is flowing river system as, and west river system, right? So these inland water bodies, they are divided into five river systems and the tributaries, they extend to about 29,000 kilometers in the country. Right, so uh, some of the important species in the northern um, riverine system would be katla, which are which belong to carps, and we have catfish, we have clupids, and we also have eel, river eels. 
Right, so these are some of the fishes which belong to the northern ribbon system. Whereas in the southern system, we have, we have some of the carps like labial. We have inter-regional transportation, transported carps as well, such as your cutla, as well as labial rohita. But these are some of the uh, fishes which are found in the southern part of the country, right? And let's go to our reservoir. So a reservoir culture-based fisheries of the small reservoir. So these are basically in the area where, uh, where the fishes are cultured or reared in a closed dam or the reservoirs, right? So these are mostly man-made water. And this man-made body, they create an obstruction, the surface flow of the rectum dam of any description on the river, stream, or any water course. And this is known as the reservoir right um, a small reservoir has have an area of less than 1000 hectare and these are good for a small culture based fisheries and fishes eels of these uh, river, reservoir system they are mostly dependent on few parameters like the normal growth the natural mortality rate as well as your fishing mortality rate right so these are something about the reservoir it means that the culture or the rearing of the fishes in the reservoir right and we have your estuarine fishes so estuaries are the it's an area of the junction where the rivers and the oceans they meet so these will form your estuaries here and below i've just given a picture of how an estuary would look like Right, so majority of the following waters on the earth they finally reach the sea so these uh, exceptions are small rivers of the brook in the inland area that either join the seasonal standing water or they themselves dry off after flo flowing a certain distance uh, there are different types of uh, estuaries a lot of famous estuarian fisheries in our country such as hugli matla uh, which is in west bengal we have Godavari and Topti, you have Narmada rivers, all of these will come under your estuarine fisheries, right? So basically these are uh, these uh, estuarine fisheries, they create a really uh, unique and aquatic environment where they create an environment of both the uh, marine fisheries as well as the inland fisheries and it, the fresh water or the inland fisheries where it meets. So uh, virtually it's an admixture of two of these different environments so i'm termed as an ecotone or it can be turned as a buffer zone right so these are so this is something about an estrogen fishes well that's all for today we're going to continue uh, more with our fisheries and in our next sessions and we'll try to cover uh, the fishery section step by step as well. So before leaving, don't forget to press the subscribe button as well as press the bell icon and for further notifications. And please do share with your friends. And if you've liked the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well. 